Hello guys, today I'd like to share a bit of information with you from the recent Airfix Creators Day, which was an event at the end of July where Airfix very kindly invited myself and a number of YouTube creators to their headquarters near Margate. It was a great day to find out more about Airfix, the company, how their models are made, and of course some of the kits that might be coming out in the future. One of the first things I did was take a tour of the Airfix showroom, and this space contains the boxes and the built models for all of Airfix's current range. So we were able to look at everything from these quick build kits here. Then we moved on to the starter kit range. They have sprues and pieces that need to be cut from the sprues and glued together like regular kits, but they might have a simplified design and they generally include most of the things that you'll need to build the kit. So they include glue, and paints and a paintbrush. They don't include a craft knife, but apart from that, they include everything that you'll need. Personally, I really enjoyed seeing the vintage kits built up. There's such a range of models here, and there's something about seeing all this box art as well, which I really enjoyed looking at. Moving around the showroom, I was able to see the 124th scale Spitfire, which I'll come back to later and their 135th scale armour kits, including the new Austin Ambulance Kit, which should be released later this year. This of course has got an interior, and it's one of those more useful interiors on kits, because of course you can have the doors open and see the, uh, the bays for the stretches in the back and so on. Sometimes when we have an interior kit like a, a Tiger for example, you're not going to see the transmission or a lot of the fighting compartment, but I feel like this kit would be a really, really good use of an interior. It was also nice to see in the showroom that for many of the kits, they had models built up in each of the color schemes that are available in the kit. So you can see there, for example, we've got the Panzer IV in the snow camouflage and in the Dunkelgelb camouflage, um, both of which are options in that kit. Um, it's just a nice way of seeing uh, how things could be built up. On the next wall of the showroom was the 148th scale aircraft. Again, they had versions built up in uh, most of the colour schemes which were available for each one. And you might notice there as we go past two of Airfix's newest kits, that's the 148 scale Buccaneer and the 148 scale Anson. I'll come back to both those in a moment. It was also nice to see the V-Bomber kits built up, so the uh, Vulcan, the Valiant and the Victor. Three really large kits there, very nicely finished in the white colour schemes. So there were three kits that really stood out to me during my time at the Airfix headquarters. The first was a 148 scale Buccaneer. The second was the 148 scale Anson. And then the last was the 124th scale Spitfire. So I'd like to show you a bit more about those now. The showroom contained several built up versions of the Buccaneer, both unpainted and painted. And you can see from these shots here the number of options that are available. So you can have the wings folded or unfolded, which is a really nice option. There's also the ability to have the engine exposed on one side. Only one of them can be exposed. And for me it was a great experience to talk to the designer of the kit, Paramjit. And you could tell as soon as you spoke to him that he was a really enthusiastic modeler. And uh, all of the design work which had gone into the Buccaneer was designed to make things better for modelers. You know, this really was a case of a modeler designing a plane for modelers. Uh, his, his passion about the project was really, uh, really apparent when he spoke to him. So for example, um, this visible engine section here, that's actually not a, uh, a separate piece that drops in because uh, Paramjit told me if he did that, if you wanted the engine to be closed, adding that separate piece there would just just take away from the smoothness of the, uh, the external skin. So instead of moulding it with a hole and then putting the separate piece in to cover it up if you want it covered, they actually designed the sprue to be closed but with thinner plastic around it so that the modeler who wants it open can just gently cut it away and uh, reveal the gap to show the engine. I thought that was a really nice touch and I can see his point there about if it was done the other way, the skin just would not be quite as smooth on the outside if you wanted to close that panel off. A few other examples he talked about. So we looked at the underside of the aircraft here. Um, you can see the detail here in the Bombay and uh, those um, cables, those wires there in the Bombay are molded as separate pieces. 
He said it's a bit harder to design things that way, but it makes life easier for the modeler because of course you can paint them separately. And also because they are separate pieces, those cables actually are round. They do have that, that undercut underneath them. Whereas if they were molded as part of the Bombay, they would have to be a sort of, um, sort of semicircle really basically, rather than having the undercut. So again, it just showed me the attention to detail there. He also mentioned that the two um, fronts there of the air intake, which are painted silver, are molded as separate parts because of course they need to be painted a different color and it makes it much easier to paint them separately and then add them onto the model. It was also really nice to see some of the additions that go into the kit. So I'm told that you will get bombs with the kit, which has not always been the case in the past. So that's nice to see that. And you do get the crew ladders as well. And then finally, we had to look at the instructions. There are a couple of different color schemes. As you might imagine, they're all the similar color, that uh, sea gray color there, that dark sea gray. Of course, really, that's limited by the, you know, the historic options that are available to them. To be honest, the Buccaneer isn't really my um, choice of subject. Sort of Cold War jets are not really for me. But having said that, I can definitely appreciate a well-engineered, well-created kit. And uh, it definitely seemed to be one of those. The second kit which grabbed my attention was the 148 scale Avro Anson. And we had a fantastic presentation on this kit from the guys who uh, researched and designed it. And in fact, Airfix were kind enough to keep the box art and other information off of their website until the YouTube Creators Day. So uh, we really were lucky enough to be the first people to see this, uh, this Anson box art. I'll show you the slides here rather than the video because my video wasn't particularly well shot. But we started with a nice introduction to the Anson aircraft itself. Um, a little bit of its background and the fact that it was quite a versatile aircraft so used as a light bomber, a coastal patrol, an ambulance, um, a trainer, a communications aircraft and so on and I think to be honest that's a bit of a hint uh, especially when combined with some of the information we learned later about the possibility that there might be some future releases there from Airfix. I for one would definitely like to see an ambulance version of the aircraft I think that would be a really, uh, really unique uh, release. One of the most interesting things for me was listening to how Airfix go about uh, researching these aircraft. So as an example of that, we were listening to this talk about the Avro Anson, uh, which is going to be released this year. But already Airfix are basically complete with their research for the 2023 releases, and they are in the process of researching their 2024 releases. So for us, these kits are quite new. Um, for a lot of the guys who work there, they're now working on products which are sort of two years away. So I found that really interesting, just the amount of work that goes into uh, these kits. So of course the um, original drawings, if they're available, uh, are quite helpful for model designers. And in the case of the Anson Airfix, they use these uh, quite a bit. But of course they can be quite hard to get hold of, and I think they had to go to Australia in this case to get hold of a set of drawings. I also just really enjoyed looking at some of this old um, um, documentation here. So these uh, service and repair manuals, for example, and the artwork contained within them. And of course, period photos. As modelers, were quite uh, used to looking at period photos. And of course, it wouldn't surprise you to know that Airfix use those as well. And while they do use museum exhibits and restorations and so on where possible, in some cases that's uh, that's quite difficult so for example the Anson there's only one um, still in existence and that's down the road uh, from me actually at Duxford and again as a lot of us modelers know restored aircraft modern flying aircraft can have a lot of changes from their original um, era um, versions so it was interesting to see how sort of sometimes two or three different sources would be compared by the designers to try to work out exactly how things should be. A good example of this was given to us when they were laser scanning the Anson at Duxford and that revealed a couple of issues there where the nose of the aircraft had been restored and wasn't quite accurate according to the, um, the period aircraft. Once they talked about the research and design process, the designers went on to how they actually started to break that down into kit parts. And it was quite interesting how many different factors influenced that. 
So obviously, in some cases, you've got the, uh, the limitations there of um, injection molding. But also, one thing that stood out to me, as I mentioned earlier, was the idea of future proofing. So maybe future color schemes, future versions might require slightly different parts. Um, and therefore, breaking the original model down in certain ways might help those options in the future. So again, with them saying that, that uh, suggests or at least has me hoping that maybe Airfix will release a few different versions of this um, over the next few years. The version that comes in the box though does have a couple of options as it is. We've got different types of um, glazing. We've also got the different uh, blisters on the, uh, the engines, which I'll show you in a moment. And they've got the option to build it with or without the, uh, the top turret there. It was great to see the uh, in-progress CAD drawings as well. And had a great conversation with the designer who was and I had a great conversation with the designer of the Anson later on, uh, talking about how they manage the um, scale thickness. So of course, uh, plastic model kits are, in, in terms of scale, much thicker aircraft skins than the real aircraft. You, you can't make plastic as thin as the real aircraft. And that has a knock-on effect on the dimensions because if your external dimensions are correct, it means the internal dimensions must be slightly smaller. And it's really interesting to talk to him about how they try and get around that and how they try to best mould things um, to make things fit. Another thing that really jumped out at me was this image here of the wing, and we'll see it on the final pictures in a moment. Uh, that texture there of the fabric being stretched over the internal spar structure, it looks great there on that CAD design. And as I say, you'll see in a moment on the, uh, the actual photo of the test build, it's a really, really nice subtle texture. Probably one of the best I've seen, and it must have taken a lot of work to get that right. So here we go, then I'll show you a couple of CAD images of the Anson, and then we'll have a look in a moment of some test build shots as well, and some sprue shots. So here you can see the engines with the, um, the blisters on them, and of course a top turret in place. There's an interior detail there as well. And of course the Anson's got quite a lot of glazing, so it should be possible to see most of that interior detail it won't be uh, hidden away inside like a lot of aircraft. So here are the shots of the test builds. And of course these are the test shots, uh, they're not the final version, things may change. Here you can see the two engine options, both on the same aircraft, with and without blisters. The closed top version there with no turret. And you might notice there's a slight difference in the glazing there as well at the top of the cockpit. And you can see that interior detail there too. We also got a chance to look at the sprues, as you can see here, some very nice looking parts. And then finally, we had a look at the color schemes. It's nice to see three very different schemes in the box. So here we've got the fairly standard RAF dark green and dark earth with the um, silver underside in this case. Then we've got this rather nice um, Australian version, also in dark brown and dark green, but I'm guessing these are the Australian equivalents of those RAF colors. So you can see there's a slight difference between these and the ones um, in the previous shot. And we've got a combination there of gloss and matte white uh, for the sides and the undersides. The third option is similar to the first one, but it's a training aircraft, and therefore we have the yellow undersides, which are common to those aircraft. So three really decent options there. It's also interesting that these three schemes don't seem to make use of some of the options. So they've all got the um, blisters on the engines, and they've all got the top turret. Uh, the last option does have the slightly different cockpit glass compared to the other two. But the turret seems to be in all of them. But the option to not have the turret is definitely included in the kit. The final new kit we saw was the 124th scale Spitfire. Now Airfix have had a 124th scale Spitfire for many, many years. But this is a brand new tooling. And the kit does look incredible. You can see here, even in my slightly blurry photos, the amount of detail we have here in the engine. 
and of course in the ammunition and machine gun bays which can be left open as well as the really fine detail of the panel lines and the rivets on the underside. I'm really quite excited about this kit. I haven't built anything in this scale before. The largest scale I've built is 1 32nd scale, but I, I feel like I really might want to go for this kit. The attention to detail looks fantastic. Even in the instructions, for example, uh, we have this dedicated page here, um, which is designed to show you where all the decals go inside the cockpit, which is such a good idea. You know, how many times have we built kits before where it just says decal number two goes somewhere on the side panel and you can't quite work out where it goes? Or well, here it's all broken down for you. We also, as you would expect, have a number of different options. So you can see here the canopy, for example. And it was clear that so much work had gone into researching this and, and trying to get every detail as, uh, as correct as it possibly could be. Um, a good example was shown to us during the presentation here. Um, things which are quite easy to get wrong, such as rivet lines going the wrong directions diagonally. Um, all kinds of uh, variations and, and permutations of different uh, aerials and so on, depending on the, uh, the year and the, depending on the colour scheme. And one thing that really stood out to me was on the right hand side here, these um, air tanks how they've been modelled once by the uh, designers of this kit and then they realised that the top of those tanks were actually the wrong shape. They were basically based on um, restored versions and the actual wartime versions had a slightly different shape to the top and they had to go back and fix those. So it really was clear to me that Airfix had put a lot of effort into uh, getting things right. In terms of colour schemes we could also look at some of the printouts from the instructions. Some of the colour is a little bit off in these. These are dark green and grey, despite how they might look. So we've got two dark green and grey options, plus another one with the invasion stripes for D-Day. Then it's a rather nice version here, which is the um, same colour scheme, but it's the French Air Force, early 1945. So the roundels are significantly different there. We've got the yellow stripes and the yellow tail. That's a nice sort of standout scheme. And then finally, we've got an American version in the desert camouflage. So that would be uh, what? It would be um, midstone and dark earth with the azure blue undersides. So three great options there for that kit. So guys, that was a quick summary of some of the things I got up to on the Airfix Creators Day. We were also given a sample of some kits to take away and I will be looking at some of those in a bit more detail in some upcoming videos. Before I go I do of course need to say a huge thank you to Airfix for inviting me to the headquarters. It was a fantastic day, it was really interesting, great to talk to them and uh, I really liked the way that all of the staff members there in Airfix were uh, open to you know questions and uh, discussion about basically anything. I think the only thing they wouldn't discuss is what are their future releases after this year. But uh, they were all very, very open. Um, it was really, really nice to speak to, to people and, and see the passion that they have for modeling and the passion they have for improving their, pro uh, their products and uh, in, you know, making things better for us as modelers. So thank you, FX. It was a really, really uh, kind thing for you to do. And uh, I hope you do one in the future because it was fantastic. Of course, I also need to say thank you to you guys for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. I really do enjoy sharing things like my work in progress photos with you guys and getting feedback from you. So thank you very much for your continued support. It is massively appreciated. So guys, until next time, take care and have fun modeling.